In this video, we will be reviewing the placement of an endobronchial blocker. Specifically, we will review the indications for placement of an endobronchial blocker, steps to placement of an endobronchial blocker, and complications and challenges that may be faced during placement. At the end of this video, there will be a brief self-assessment to test your knowledge on the concepts presented. Endobronchial blocker placement can be used in lieu of a double lumen endotracheal tube shown here as a means for single lung ventilation. Single lung ventilation is used for various indications, including isolation of the lung to prevent contamination of contents from the other lung, control of distribution of ventilation for thoracic surgical procedures, or unilateral whole lung lavage. In the critical care setting, it is most commonly used for lung isolation for massive hemoptysis. At this point, we will review the steps to placement of the Cook endobronchial blocker for a patient who has an endotracheal tube in place. The endobronchial blocker consists of a balloon, aspiration port, snare, and snare loop proximal end. The adapter consists of a port through which the bronchoscope will be placed, a port for the endobronchial blocker, attachment for the endotracheal tube, and the attachment to the ventilator. First insert the endobronchial blocker into the adapter. Then insert the bronchoscope. Then you will manually loop the snare around the end of the scope and tighten by pulling the proximal end of the snare loop. This is how they should ultimately appear. Then, disconnect the ventilator and attach the adapter with the scope and blocker to the endotracheal tube. Reattach the ventilator to the remaining port of the adapter, which is not shown in the demonstration. Next, advance the scope and blocker together to the desired area. You may need someone to help advance the blocker at the same time as the scope. Once you have reached the desired location, release the snare by loosening the snare loop proximal end. Then advance the blocker alone so that there is visualization of the snare and the balloon. Using the aspiration port with the syringe attached, insufflate the balloon until the desired airway is occluded. Tighten the adapter around the blocker to prevent dislodgement. Suction any secretions around the bleeding area as well as the ventilated lung before removing the scope completely. Note the distance at which the blocker has been placed in order to observe any future migration of the blocker. Consider heavy sedation or paralytics if hemodynamics allow to prevent dislodgement of the blocker due to cough or agitation. There are a number of potential complications and challenges to be aware of during placement of an endobronchial blocker. Airway injury from balloon inflation can occur when placing an endobronchial blocker on the right side to occlude the right main stem. The right upper lobe takeoff may be inadvertently occluded. The endobronchial blocker can be connected to suction, but this is a small channel. Lastly, there is a high risk of dislodgement or loss of seal around the balloon. Be sure to note the distance at which the blocker has been placed to monitor for migration, tighten the adapter around the blocker, and consider heavy sedation or paralytics to prevent cough. In summary, we hope that this video provided valuable information in placement of an endobronchial blocker. There will now be a self-assessment. Please pause the video after each question to test your knowledge on the subject before resuming the video for the answer. Name what instrument connects or uses each port of the endobronchial blocker and adapter. True or false, the endobronchial blocker is placed through the instrument port of the bronchoscope.
What are some ways to prevent dislodgement or migration of the endobronchial blocker? What are some indications for single lung ventilation? Name some complications to placing an endobronchial blocker. 